Hallelujah. Thank you, Phil, for my intro. Man, crazy times, huh? We're all sitting super far apart, yet we're here, and uh, lots going on. Maybe not a lot of us are talking about what's going on, what they're thinking about, or maybe a lot of us are, but a lot of things are happening, a lot of commotion, a lot of news, whether you like it or not, you're going to hear stuff, you're going to see stuff, and I'm just going to be real tonight. Is that okay? Okay. Because I was actually trying to prepare the message, and I just couldn't get... I'm like, Lord, I'm looking for the word, but I feel like you just want to speak to the heart. Like, I'm looking almost for a story or something. And he's just like, Alex, share what's on your heart. And I'm just going to be a little vulnerable with you guys. I'm not going to, like, try to tell you that my day or month or whatever season has been worse than yours. I'm not trying to compare, like, my season with yours. I'm just going to tell you, like, what the Lord's been doing with me um, and personally. And uh, honestly, it's been crazy. It's crazy that the world flipped upside down and the enemy is trying to rob people's peace more than anything or any time I've ever been alive, at least I can say. The whole world is flipped upside down. Our families, we're closer with, all of us are at homes and the enemy is robbing peace from people left and right to a point where believers are almost attacking other believers and we're having all these arguments and discussions and all these things that are happening and everybody is kind of losing their mind a little bit. And to an extent, I would say the enemy has been doing a pretty good job. And honestly, up until about mid-March, it felt like everything was going pretty good, right? Like mid-March, nothing was going wrong. We're still living our life. We're doing whatever we're doing. Oh, some of us were still going to work. All of us had like these things. So I'll tell you personally, like, from a dealership perspective, we were doing very well early March. And then out of nowhere, everything just kind of starts like... Honestly, there's no other way to say it. It's just like taking a dump. Like it turned from bad to worse to worse to worse to worse. Um, in mid-March, actually, mom, I, I had a bunch of guys over. It was really good. And I'm like, I had this special intention in my heart. I'm like, man, I want to get guys together that maybe are not going to be together normally. And I had them all over. And we're hanging out. And as they're all leaving, I'm downstairs. And it's like, I don't know, midnight almost. And we're like downstairs watching a movie or something. And dad runs downstairs. He's like, Alex, call 911. Mom's not feeling good. And I'm like, what the heck? This, is, this stuff doesn't happen to me, you know? This doesn't happen to people like me. Like, a lot of stuff has been happening to people like me that's not supposed to happen to recently. And I, I run upstairs and I see mom. And it's, it's, it's different whenever, like, you hear about these stories, you know? But whenever it happens to you, it, it's hard to put into words what, what you're feeling and what, what's going on. And I don't want, I don't want to like play on your emotions or anything. I'm just telling you straight up what was going on. And mom shaking on the upstairs and ambulance rushing in at midnight. And we're up in the hospital all night, not knowing what's going to happen. Dad, me and dad, are, just me and dad are sitting there. Can't do anything. And there's a bunch of people like working on your mom on the hospital bed and you don't know what to do. This is all mid-March, it starts. Time goes on, we go to work, we're missing wheels, a bunch of stuff is stolen. We're like, man, this sucks. Another thing that sucks. I know it's small stuff sometimes it feels like, but they add up, you know? Some time goes on, and Angela, many of you guys know, my sister out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, catches coronavirus, hospitalized, intubated, pregnant, and things are not looking good. Like, you guys hear the whole testimony, you hear it in the grand scheme of things, but whenever you're in the moment and whenever you're there every single night with her, her husband hanging out and like trying to make the best of the situation, it's a little different, you know? It's not just, oh, it's a good word to read or it's a good thing, just apply this, man. Just apply this, this scripture into your life and it's gonna be great and rehearse it. It's a little different whenever that happens to you specifically. And then uh, just even last Monday, we had a theft break in on our dealership. You know, somebody just decided that now would be a really good time, no one's there and they're just gonna break in. They broke all of our locks. All this stuff's going on midnight. I'm like, literally, I'm like, I just had a rough day. And I'm like driving home and I'm like thinking, I'm like, Lord, like, is it the good times or the bad times that make me who I am? And literally, as I'm thinking that thought, Phil works with us. He's like, he texts me. He's like, Alex, did you see the text message? And somebody just texts us and says, hey, it looks like somebody's trying to break into your lot. Should I call 911? I'm like, yeah, of course, please do call 911. So me and Art, we run over there. 
And actually, three days ago, or four days ago, my sister, another sister of mine, she was pregnant, and she's been pregnant for a while. And the day before she delivers, um, the doctors gather together and say, hey, it looks like her, the son, he's gonna be born, but he has a heart problem. And within a week of him being born, we're gonna have to operate on him. On a, on a newborn, on the heart, you know? And it's not my kid, but it's my nephew, so it's like, sometimes it feels like you just can't catch a break. And it's crazy, the enemy, and then you throw in this whole corona thing. You know, you throw in everything, and you wanna say to people, hey, you're doing really good, everything is good. And it, it can be in the moment whenever you're just like putting on that mask, that Christian mask, you know? But then like you're lying there in bed, and you're like, holy smokes, what's going on? You know, and it's, it's wild. Like everything, I'm telling you, like it's just the smallest things. Sometimes it's bigger things. It's like, I'm a young guy, we're trying to do a dealership, trying to run a business. And honestly, like last month, we're sitting there like, yo, I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to pay rent for next month. Um, so there's that. Like if we shut down, what happens? Like literally, like you're having these conversations. These aren't thoughts. These are conversations you're having. Like, hey, if it goes down, this is what we should do. This isn't like a, a rhetorical thing, you know? And things happen that don't happen to people like you. You know, we're all here gathered, super spread apart. And what's crazy is that in all of this, whatever you wanna call it, this season of our lives that can be very difficult and not easy to say the least. Me personally, I, I can't, I can't, I, I wish that upon nobody. Whenever you see like your mom, you know, like in the hospital bed that does something differently to you. And you're helpless, you know? You can't, you can't do anything. You wanna pray, you wanna say you can do something, but you're sitting there and you're just praying that the doctors do their thing. I'm gonna read out of John a little bit and it's gonna be out of John 14. And with all of this stuff happening and again, it's not just my life. I'm not trying to compare my life to yours. Like the last month and a half, I'm not, gonna, I'm not here up here complaining. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say that all this stuff happening and all of us are wondering, man, will it ever go back to normal? Will it ever go back to normal where we can just go back to living the life we wanted to live and living the way we wanted to live? And I kind of caught myself thinking, I don't think it should. I don't think it ever could. It could, but I don't think it ever should go back to normal the way it was. Because honestly, if we look at it, I think we took a lot of things for granted. And I can speak that for myself. I can't maybe share for you. But our walk with God, our walk with each other, our fellowship, our, us as a community, the way we love, the way we do everything, I think was slightly taken for granted. And it sometimes takes you in these positions for you to realize that you actually do need to change and that there's so much more available than what you've been settling with. And in John chapter 14, verse 23, this is Jesus at the Last Supper, basically. He's talking and he's saying, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not, love my, uh, will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, but they belong to my Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all the things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I, live, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. This is Jesus saying, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You read the passage and you're like, man, it sounds so cool. It sounds almost spiritual, you know? But if you really start thinking about it, at the very beginning, Jesus says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. He will make his home with you. Think about that for a second. You know, there's that Bible passage that says, 
no one can come into a, a house unless they first are stronger and they take that man, they subdue him, and then they can take over the house. Who's stronger than the Lord that we serve? I want to challenge you and like literally think about it. What are you standing on? What are you really believing? Listen, if the Prince of Peace is at home in you, it doesn't matter what happens. You're in a good spot. You're in a place where your foundation is pretty strong. But I think a lot of us are starting to realize that our foundation was actually not that strong. A lot of us maybe are starting to realize in these difficult times, our foundation was actually a Sunday evening or Sunday morning gathering. That we didn't have anything deeper, we didn't have anything more. And as a result, we're living in this thing that's a little more disappointing than anything else. And it's difficult and it's hard to keep your head up. It almost feels like you're trying to make something up to keep your head up. But that doesn't have to be like that. And I'm going to tell you guys honestly, the crazy part is, amongst all of this that happened, everything that I said, I promise you, I did not lose peace. There's something that happens when you really decide to follow the Lord. I was talking to a friend of mine recently and they were like, man, all this stuff's happening. Like, how are you not freaking out? What's going on? I'm like, man, I made a decision a while back and I'm pretty firm on it. And I'll tell you this, his decision to have peace in you never changed. Maybe your decision to follow him might have. Maybe we grew so comfortable before quarantine. I don't want to call it like pre-quarantine, post-quarantine. But maybe before this whole thing, we grew so comfortable with what we had and what we were doing that like once all of this started happening and we started to reveal what we really are and we're not that satisfied with it. And then we're wondering why, man, it's because we're not really following him like in the place outside of just these walls. What Abby was talking about, spot on, reading the word, surrounding yourself with the right people. And guys, I want to tell you something crazy stories right all this crazy stuff that happened mom what ends up happening is we take her to the ER she has super high blood pressure they can't find out why that same night she goes home Angela delivers the baby the baby is perfectly fine I was just with her literally right before this she's perfectly fine wakes up from the coma no physical harm no memory loss no body damage nothing like that our business who cares It'll burn down, it'll come up, who cares? I'll buy new locks, I'll get new wheels. Who cares about that stuff? My peace will not be shaken. And I challenge you, is your peace being taken from you? And if it is, maybe it's because you don't know who lives in your home. Take courage, guys, take courage, lift up your faith. And I, I honestly believe that the Holy Spirit was doing something this morning, I mean, this evening as we were praying. I'm not gonna be long, but I do wanna read in uh, Romans chapter five as well. In Romans chapter 5, worship team, you know what, jump on. We're just going to jump into prayer because I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something. Romans chapter 5, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in now which we stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also, but also glory in our suffering because we know our suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though, for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us since we have all been justified by his blood how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him for if while we were God's enemies we were reconciled to him through the death of his son how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life not only is this so, but we also boast in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received new rec or now re received reconciliation. I'm not going to keep reading. You should continue reading that chapter on your own. It's really awesome. But what I want to challenge you is this, guys. These sufferings, they show you what is really inside of you. These things don't just happen and now you realize, oh man, I've had this bad, all this 
this thing sucks so much, everything is so bad, I don't know how Christians are. No, it's just showing what is really in you, what you are really standing on. And I wanna challenge you, each and every single one of you, check your heart. What are you standing on? The best part I can tell you this is that Jesus never changes. Listen, a lot of things can change your job, you can get fired, you can lose your business. God forbid it, you can lose a loved one, but you know what, your foundation could not change. I can tell you these things because these are the same questions that I was literally thinking. We're thinking like, man, God, are we gonna have a miracle or we're we gonna have a funeral right now for Angela? It's literally a thought that you can have. And obviously I'm super thankful that we have a crazy testimony. But how much greater is the testimony of knowing Him? How much greater is the testimony when the whole world is going to hell and everybody's losing their mind? We can stand at peace and in a peace, not just man-made, but a supernatural peace that doesn't change based off our situations, based off what the news say, based off what even people around you say, but we can stand in fact and know that we are in a right standing with God and that we don't look to the left, we don't look to the right, but we keep our eyes focused upon Him and in Him, when we're focused, laser focused on Him, every single day trying to be as intentional as we can, not religious, not perfect, not just filled with more words, not filled with more scriptures so that we can argue and debate, but focused on Him and knowing who Jesus Christ is, then you'll see that in the worst situations, the worst of the worst, all of a sudden you still can have peace. And that storm in your life that's been tormenting maybe everybody around you, all of a sudden is peace, be still. And He's there. He's there. And so I want to take your attention, not on Corona, not on all this garbage that's going on, but I want to take our attention back to where it belongs, to Jesus Christ, the author, the starter, and the finisher of our faith, of our love, of our hope, of everything that we stand for. Good news is, if it was based upon your performance, you would be done for, but it's not. It's our dependency upon Him, our willingness to just lay down everything for Christ and continue to pursue Him. So I want us to all stand up. And I'm not even going to ask if you need prayer or anything like that. That's a joke. I know all of us need prayer right now in these hard times. All of us are having things that we're going through. And honestly, I'm sick of this religious stuff. I want the raw. I want the real. I want the life transforming stuff. I want things that change my neighbors. I want things that change who I am. I want things that change my friends that I thought could not be reached. I want things that change my perspective of everything. I want things to be able to keep me at peace when everything else is going wrong. I need an encounter with the Lord. I need an encounter with the the real one and that's what we have access to and if we put our focus upon him all of a sudden everything else starts fading away it's not to say that it's not there I'm not being delusional saying that nothing bad will happen I'm saying he's so much greater than anything that the enemy has against you no enemy can rob your peace when the prince of peace is at home in you no enemy can take your peace away so I want to restore that I want us just to focus upon him because I can't say or give you something I can't tell you something and then you'll just get it and know. You have to just surrender to Him. I want to ask you one more question and then we're just going to jump into prayer. Do you think you need to listen to another sermon or a revelation or a thought or simply apply what you know? I think so many of us have been so good at sounding so spiritual that we fail to apply what we know. And I'm throwing myself in there. So let's just dive in, guys. The Prince of Peace is in this place. The Prince of Peace is here right now for you. Right now, right here in this moment. And I'm not gonna try to pretend like you guys, come on, don't play fake with me. Don't play fake with yourself. I'm not gonna have an altar call. I want you to have an encounter with the Lord right now. I know that right now, amongst everything else, what the Lord, everyone is saying that all this garbage is happening. But I wanna say that we can have peace as believers. We can stand on something bigger than just what the news says. We can stand on something bigger than just what's going on on our left, on our right. Even if you lost your job, He hasn't changed. His love for you hasn't changed. And everything is still still in his hands as long as we continue to surrender to him so father god we thank you so much god Lord, we worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. You have not lost your power, father. I just pray for every single person, god that through this dark season has something so hard that they're going through father that maybe it hurts to talk about maybe it hurts to think about lord every single person that's maybe losing their job that doesn't have a place of income father that you be the person god you be the place father they run to not their foundation upon their works not their foundation upon their success god but upon you god and that their peace will not be taken from them god our peace will not be taken from you 
God, I thank you so much, Jesus. I pray for every single person, God, that has just felt discouraged in this moment, God, that has felt down, God, that has been just under oppression, like a shadow has been following them, like a cloud has been upon them, Father. I pray, God, you lift that cloud, Father, and you bring in that sun, God. You bring in that light, God. You restore what the enemy wanted to use for destruction, God, and you bring it up to light, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that every single person, God, that has had their head down, that has been discouraged, God, they look up at the cross and they see the finished work on the cross and we understand that we have the finished work. We have it all because if we have the Son, we have it all, Jesus. If we have the Son, Lord, we truly have it all. We don't want to just talk about it and quote good scripture, God. We want to be able to live it out, God. We want to be able to, in the most difficult times of our lives, God, to react in a way, Father, that resembles your heart, that resembles who we are in you, Jesus. We glorify your name, God, and we thank you, God. We're going to lift your name up high, even in the most difficult times, even in the times where it doesn't make sense, God. We're going to continue to lift your name up high, Father, because your name is the only name that is worthy to be praised, God. No virus, nothing standing against us, God. Nothing that has been depression, God. Nothing is going to be able to separate us from you, Father. So right now, God, we shift our focus upon you, God. We decide, God, and we choose to say, God, we want to worship you, Father. We want to keep our eyes upon you, God. Just like Peter, when he was walking out on the boat, God, we want to be able to walk out and see you, God. When things are hard, God, not because things are easy, God, but because we need you, Father. Because we love you, Lord, and because you love us, God. Holy Spirit, I pray, God, right now, God, you just touch every single person here, God, right now. God, in a personal way, Father, you know exactly where they're lacking. You know exactly what they're thinking, Father, and yet you still choose to love, God. Your love has not changed, not for a split second, God. Maybe our focus has changed, God, but your love has not. Come on, let's focus upon him right now. Focus on Jesus. Focus on what he's done for you. This is not the end of the world. This is the beginning of something beautiful. This is the beginning of something that God is going to use for his glory. He's going to restore things. He's going to build things. He's going to resurrect things. He's going to do things that are impossible. I've seen it done in my life multiple times. God, I thank you so much, God. God, I thank you so much, God that you spared the life of my sister, God. I thank you that you spared the lives of those of my loved ones, Father. I thank you that we still have this community, God. I thank you so much, Jesus, that we get to know who you are, God. I thank you, God, that we have a community of people that know what it is to love you, God, that know what it is to love one another, Lord Jesus. God, we worship you. God, we wanna see you manifest more and more in the most difficult times, God. God, we don't want to play no church games, Lord. We want to be the representation of the bride here on earth, God. We want to be Jesus. We want to be loved to our neighbors, God. We want to have our focus set upon you, God. Holy Spirit, we just ask you that you baptize us again and again, God. You encourage us. You comfort us like you said you would. You comfort us like you said you would, like you promised Jesus. You sent him for a reason, God, for times like this. For times like this when man doesn't know what to do, Lord, but we turn to you and you surely do. Holy Spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, for every single family member in our church, God, in our city, God, that is hurting, that has been just under attack, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I just pray for your love to be shown, God. Will you send the people, will you send those people that are your children, God, just to demonstrate your love again and again. Come on, right now in this moment, just take it up with Jesus. Whatever it is, just take it up with Jesus. Just start talking to him. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Come on, this isn't about your performance. It's not about your Bible reading plan. It's about encountering the one who loves you, the one who sees you right now in this moment. He's not ashamed of you. He wants to encounter you. And even in the worst times of our lives or in the best times of your life, he still is there.